We are now in, got to say this right, Shediac. <laughs> so they have right here, they have the world's largest lobster. I just need a lot of butter. <laughs> Wish we could eat it. But anyway, <laughs> a cool little quirky. Hey everybody, welcome to Tigner Adventures. So, <laughs> we have a long driving day today, uh, but we have a, quite a few little places we're stopping while we're going. <laughs> Look at this giant axe. Got a bug. I'm not sure uh, who determines it's the world's largest axe, but that's what they're saying here. It's pretty big. Yep. This axe was built here in 1991. Um, and it was the world's largest axe, symbolizing the importance of the forest industry. Past, present, and future to the town of Nakawick. And then look, this isn't something you see every day. This looks like an RV floating down the river. <laughs> <laughs> it's Canada's style of a houseboat, small. They don't do things really big like they do in the US for houseboats. Anyway, we are just checking this out here and then we're going to move on to the UFO Museum. Woo! Woo. You know, we, we, we've seen one of those in Roswell. Now they have one here, so we're going to check this out in Canada while we're driving through. This is the Frederick Museum, and apparently they have a UFO exhibit here. Look at this big frog. The famous Coleman frog. So this frog was, came from Africa. It was two feet long and weighed 10 pounds. And as strange as that might have been, we actually found what we were looking for here. So Stanton Freeman has all this information that he collected on UFOs. Stanton Freeman lived in the US, married a Canadian, and this is the information that he collected all about UFOs. So we're gonna have to dig into this a little bit to see what was so cool? Did he meet the UFOs? He met aliens? Wow. So he went around and did lectures and things about UFOs and then individuals got a hold of him and told him his story and he actually wrote this book. So if you want to dig into that a little bit more, there's a book that he wrote about it. But basically this is all about other people's uh, things that they've seen other people's experiences that they had concerning UFOs and they reported those to him and he collected all of this information. So I guess it comes down to whether you believe all those individuals or not. A couple years ago we were at the UFO uh, museum that was in Roswell, New Mexico and we posed the question then, do aliens really exist? So just some more information, you get to decide again, does aliens really exist? So this is uh, Stanton Friedman's life right here. He was born in 1934 and he passed away in 2019. Look, on July 2nd, 2010, he was inducted into the Roswell UFO Hall of Fame. So see, they are tied together. Now I will have to go back and re-watch that video again. I'll put it in the uh, link here so you can uh, go back and check out that when we visited Roswell, New Mexico. We made it away from the UFOs, at least I think we did, and didn't get stuck, did we? <laughs> and now we're we at the, up either. yeah, now we're at the uh, world's longest wow. covered bridge. And that is one long bridge. Yeah, what does that say up there, 1,282 feet? And then I think it was built in 1872, so it has been here for a long wow. time. Yeah. You can't drive across it anymore. Yeah, um, we couldn't. But <laughs> even when it was we, new, we couldn't anyway, but, uh, <laughs> but you can uh, walk across it as a pedestrian bridge. So you can walk back and forth across the river. So this is another one of those really cool things that you just don't see every day. <laughs> <laughs> Look, here is the bridge and now we're going inside. So it does have pavement on the road. So not really sure why it's closed because I do have a walking side over on the right here. But you can ride your bikes across here, no problem. So nice and long bridge. Look how that was constructed up there. That is pretty cool. A lot of beams on this bridge. So the instructions are to drive up to this white post and then coast 
back. Coach came back. Pretty fast, too. Oh, wow. They are. It looks like you're going up the hill. But man, when you're coasting back, it gets going pretty fast. Woo! Look at that. Gotta go again. <laughs> there it is. There's the white post on the right. So we're gonna stop here. This time we're going forwards. So that car is up there. It does look like it's uphill, even from here. So we're gonna just start coasting. Spooky. Yep. Yeah, because you get going faster as you're going up. You know. What an illusion. <laughs> so hopefully you can see that in the camera because it well, kind you of just adjusts. Have to come here and do it. Yeah, it kind of adjusts the uh, the way it works, but uh, we'll see if that works. Otherwise, come to this area. Well, after a long day of driving, we have got to our camp spot and look at this gorgeous view from our campground. It's called the Gorge. So there's a dam around the corner up a little ways up the gorge. And this is the runoff. So pretty. Well, how do you tell that you're in Quebec province? nothing is in English anymore <laughs> so all the other provinces we've visited always had English and French but once we came into Quebec there was no English everywhere anywhere so <laughs> luckily though when I filled up with gas the pump did have an option that said English so it was able to translate it <sighs> oh and it's, it's 80 degrees out and almost 90 percent humidity so uh, I am sweating like crazy, but hey, we got the camp all set up. I gotta go back, I got sweat in my eyes now, but camp's all set up. We are going to get the AC on and sit back and relax for a little while and try to cool back down because when temperatures like this, your body doesn't cool down that easy. So that's our plan for today. First day in Quebec City along this journey. So then we'll look for some more quirkies that we can add to this video. Oh, this is where I need to stand. This is much better. <laughs> so we'll have to run the AC unit a little while to kind of cool us down. Uh, so this uh, high heat is um, supposed to, there's an advisory through five o'clock today. So we had it yesterday and today, and then it's cooling down finally. Uh, so we'll see how that works out. Um, sure nice to have an AC unit though. So one of the things I wanted to say is, um, you know all traveling around Canada and everything we really haven't I mean it doesn't really feel like you're out of the States really I mean it's pretty close to the same thing continually except when you enter Quebec now we feel like we for sure are in a foreign country um, and not the United States anymore so there is a, definitely a different uh, feel and it's kind of exciting and luckily we have full hookups at this particular place that we are staying so we don't have to worry about using our batteries. All right, well, good morning. Yee. We arrived uh, <laughs> yesterday. We have a really nice uh, campground that we're staying in. Uh, unfortunately, it, there was a heat wave, which uh, fortunately actually ended yesterday. So we just had to put up with it when we first got here and set up in the heat and everything. But, uh, you know, we're all set up and now the temperatures are cold. <laughs> this morning, it's like a, <laughs> The heat wave ended and all of a sudden the freeze wave came in so anyway um so i'll tell you you can uh, you know this is the first time we've really felt like we've traveled out of the country <laughs> because when we're um the rest of canada that we've been to it really hasn't been that big of a, a deal you know there's been english everywhere everyone speaks good english now that we're in quebec um we have to say bonjour and then, hey, do you speak English? Because, uh, you know, we don't speak French. So, hi. Uh, so, anyway, um, it's been interesting. 
and uh, it's better to target the younger individuals <laughs> when we're trying to talk to somebody because most of them speak English, uh, well, pretty good. And uh, the older people don't really want to be bothered with it, so, uh, which is fine. The campground we're staying in is pretty much all French. Um, every once in a while I'll hear someone speaking English, uh, but very few. So it's uh, being in another country. So that's kind of an interesting, exciting adventure right there in itself. Uh, we're only here for a couple days, and so we're just kind of picking out a couple things to see. We are in Quebec City, so that's where we're staying. So right now, we have picked to go to a waterfall. I'm sure that's not surprising to most of you. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, this is a waterfall with a suspension bridge. Um, it's a park. Um, and when we figure out how to say the name, we'll tell you. But uh, anyway, it was, uh, it was like uh, $11 or something a piece to come in, a Canadian. So we still are using Canadian <laughs> currencies. So uh, anyway, so that'll be nice as far as US translation goes. So we are walking down to the bridge, so we'll see what that is like in just a minute. All right, here is the sign that shows everything going on here and this is called the Parc de la Chute Montmorency. I probably messed that all up but anyway that's what it is. All right we are going across the big suspension bridge to get a good look at the falls. Woo! Wow, you can see it right over there to the side. Wow look at that. Lean over here to take a better look. Here are the falls. And there's more to see right down through there. And that's the bottom of where you walk down and you get a better look of the falls. So we'll go do that. So we came just to see the falls, but there is a lot more going on here. And look, they have this nice zip line going down through here too. Like a bungee setup that stops them. Oh, it kind of just instant breaks there. Well, we've moved down below the falls here. How about at the very bottom of the falls? Look at that. Oh. We have, this is the bottom of the waterfall. So we got the mist coming in. Woo. We can feel it. <laughs> yeah, at least it uh, makes it a lot cooler. <laughs> yeah, it's nice. But uh, anyway, that's it. This is the end of this little portion. So now on to the next thing. Uh, Finishing the day out with going to Costco. Now I know some of you guys are gonna get after us for this, but anyway, we're going to Costco. We're in Quebec City and we're going to Costco. We're not necessary foodies, but hey, we do like poutine. So this will be our last last poutine. Well, I think this will be our last one before we, because we're getting really close to leaving Canada. So uh, we got poutine and a couple, we got a sausage hot dog and a regular hot dog too. So, Ooh, baby. Um, mm. so we should be full by the time we get done eating, mm. which is always good before you go shopping. All right, we've met this uh, French family here that lives here in Quebec. Um, this individual and his wife and his two daughters. And so we're gonna talk to the daughter here for just a minute because now is your youngest sister, is she in the English program also? Oh, well, she speaks English, but um, I mean, she doesn't as much as me, I guess. Like coming. <laughs> yeah. So it mainly starts like from grade six up? <coughs> Is that when it starts uh, that you can yeah. take English? Well, when you get in grade six, you have to do half of the year in English. And grade seven, uh, there's all options all over Quebec. Like it's different everywhere. You don't need to speak English in your program, but there's always English classes. Okay. Yep. So, but you know French, so your first portion, and you, do you guys speak French at home all the time? Yep. Yep. Do you know English? Yes. Yes? Bet. She's better than me. Okay, <laughs> well, that's young people, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. So, I was telling people on our channel, it's like we have to kind of hunt out the young people to find those to ask them if they speak English, because most older individuals do not uh, speak English, so... But that's pretty cool that they have this program for you to, so that you can be bilingual. 
Uh, I was talking to one person that was working like in retail and they said that it's required that they know two languages. Yeah. So, so that's pretty nice. I wish I would have learned something when I was younger. <laughs> so, I did take French in my seventh year. You did? I, do, I took French for seventh and eighth year. I took French for one hour each day. Oh. So, you know, it didn't stick. It, didn't stick. it would have been nice to be, really yeah. Okay. Yeah, it would be nice to be immersed yeah. into the program. Here in Canada, they have an option for like people that come from here. There's like a language immersion you can do in the summer. It's like three weeks for young people. And it's like if you come from a French city, you can do three weeks in English. And if you come from an English city, yeah, it's like an, ex an exchange, but like all paid by the government. Like, oh. you don't pay anything. <laughs> oh, oh, that's <laughs> nice. You get to see different places. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so. so... Let me say something in French. Oh, yeah, say yes. something. Abonnez-vous à la chaîne. <laughs> she, well, she said subscribe to her channel. <laughs> <laughs> And like it, yeah, okay, great. Okay, so why don't you introduce yourself? Ah, Mathieu. Okay, and your wife? Mathieu. Mon nom est Florence. My name is Florence. Okay. Ah. Mon nom c'est Odile. <laughs> Mon nom c'est Frédéric. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. My name is Frédéric. Well, thanks for being on the channel. <laughs> And, and thanks for helping us out here at Costco get our food. Yeah, sure. <laughs> well, what a fitting end to this video. There is Quebec City right behind us. This is our last night in Quebec. Mm -hmm. So we tomorrow we're moving on into the uh, province of Ontario. So we've had fun here, met some fun people, and seen some cool <laughs> things. So that's where we're just going to end it there. So thanks for coming along with us. And uh, hopefully it's been kind of fun for you too. And uh, We'll just plan on seeing you down the road somewhere, and if not, then hopefully on our next video. So take care. Bye. <laughs>